just finished cutting the hole in the roof here and the tip I can give you is make sure that you check your measurements two three times uh, because you only get one shot at cutting this off the roof so there it is now we can actually see inside the trailer and the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that little duct in that little square that we put in through through here just a little bit earlier and make sure that it fits and if it does I'll show you the rest of what happens because this is they call it the curb plate right here that goes right on top here on the trailer and then the other part kind of sticks through it so I'll give you the step-by-step -step on how that goes but the tip I can give you is make sure that you double check your measurements that way uh, you don't mess anything up and that you're at pretty close to the hole there and if anything maybe it's like an eighth inch that you're off and you can always just trim that up but that's how it is on the cut of the roof So there's the hood right here, and then there is the hole that goes to the outside. As you can see, I had to cut just a little bit on the right-hand side right there, about a quarter inch, just because it was hitting the duct, that duct that goes to the top just a little bit. So I wanna make sure that I had enough clearance, so I did that. One more thing that I do get a lot of questions on is, did you weld it to the hood? This duct right here, this is the one that feeds to the outside where all your smoke goes in through here and then your exhaust fan sits right in there. I did not weld mine to the hood. One reason was because the fire department did not require me to do it. Two, because I do not know how to weld. So that was the biggest reason why I asked the fire department and they said as long as I put high temperature aluminum tape on here, it was fine. So that's what I did. So I drilled four screws and then I attach that to the hood. If they do require you to weld it, that's, that's up to your fire department. If they require you to weld it, then I guess you have to weld it. I cannot help you there because I do not know how to weld and I cannot show you how to weld, but that's how I did mine. I put four screws, that holds it up to the hood, and then I put aluminum tape, high temperature aluminum tape, and that's what covers everything up there. So that is the deal there on how we're gonna attach that to that. Let's climb up here now and see how this looks. So this is that little duct that I was telling you about that goes up to the top. We're gonna have to cut this. It's just a matter of how short we have to cut it. And then you put this curb thing right on top like that. And then that's what holds it to the trailer. I'm gonna show you right now if I can get this situated. Give me two seconds. All right, there you go if you can get a good visual. This right here is where we cut a little bit off the lip on this side so it wouldn't overflow on the trailer that much on the curb side. And then there's gonna be bolts. I marked out my studs. There's a stud right here that goes right here. So we're gonna drill in through the hood somewhere right here. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. You can see my markings, those are the studs. So we're gonna do another one right there. And then we'll do another one up front right here. Let me take this little garbage out. So now what we do is there's another piece of metal that comes with the hood from Hood Mart. And then I'm gonna show you how we cut that so we can put that right on top right here. And then that finishes this piece up as much as we can. And now we just have to secure it with bolts. But there's one more piece that goes right on top that we have to cut it so it can fit snug up to this right here. This piece right here came with the kit from Hood Mart. So this is a piece that kind of fits over this right here the little hood thing the little vent thing so we have to cut this square out but first we just want to make sure that this doesn't go over that curb plate so it fits nice and snug right on there so this is the next cut that we need to do when it comes to installing the hood right there All right, so as I climb up here to the top of the trailer again, this is the part that goes, this is that duct, as you guys can see, that comes from the inside of the hood up. And then this is kind of like a, uh, I don't even know what they call it, but all this comes together in the same kit with Hood Mart. So on here, I just kind of, I'd rather always be a little bit on the short side because I can always trim some off than to be really, really big on the cut. So on here I might just have to trim some off there. What I did is I placed this on top and then I went inside and I just kind of marked around and that's how I got my cut there 
on where to cut this piece right there. So this will be all. This is literally all it is to the hood. And then we put that little mushroom top right up top right there. But there you go. That's the curb plate with this plate up top with the top plate and then the duct right there. And that's all that comes together with the hood. So they do give you this bag of bolts right here from Hood Mart or I guess now it's called NAKS. One thing that you will have to buy is this 916 drill bit that drills through metal so you can drill it up. These are half inch bolts. They're super long. They're about six inches somewhere around there. But you're going to need this to drill through the hood and up through the trailer top. So just know that it's a 916 drill bit for metal. So let me summarize a little bit of the install for the hood. I was not able to record it yesterday and I'm going to tell you the reason why. Two reasons. Number one is it was raining. Well, there was a rain cloud coming and it actually did rain and I needed to just hurry up. And obviously sometimes recording, we take a little bit longer doing these installs. But yesterday I just needed to hurry up and do it. And number two, um, the person that helped me because I did need somebody to help me because from here, from the bottom up, it takes... Now, obviously somebody to hold up the bolt on this side and then somebody to put the nuts on the other side I'm going to show you how it looks up top from the roof But what I did is the tip that I can give you is make sure that you're on your studs So right here are, there's a trailer stud that goes right here and obviously we want to be in that stud So in your trailer or in your truck make sure I repeat make sure that you are in your stud Because that's going to help you get a real nice grab on this hood so it can hold up the weight because it is a little bit heavy. So we got one there. We got one right here, which runs to this stud right there. We have another one right there, which runs to this stud right here. Oh, there it is right there. And then we got the last one back there. And that goes to that stud right there where the screws are. I am going to do one more thing. The kit only comes with four from Hood Mart. So I always like to add a fifth one. I bought this one at Home Depot. It's a half inch bolt. And I'm going to drill right through here and then that's going to get attached to the curb plate i'm going to show you that upstairs right now through the trailer and this is what this is what i use right here is a yep a 9 16th drill bit make sure it's metal you can buy dewalt you can buy milwaukee uh, but it gets really hot so make sure you wear gloves and if you can a long sleeve shirts and some goggles for sure but there it is right there that's the install for the hood on the half inch bolts with a 9 16th drill bit. So let me show you upstairs on the top of the roof and how it looks over there. As you can see, I had to tarp it off yesterday because that rain cloud, I knew it was coming, but I just needed to get this done because I felt like it was something that I just needed to get done. But these are the bolts, obviously they raise up really high from the top, as you can see here. You wanna hit the curve plate. I like to hit the curve plate because then that way this holds it down. And right here, we're gonna tighten it up and we're gonna cut these. We're gonna use thread lock right here, red thread lock to be able to hold the nuts. Ooh, one more thing that I forgot to mention is these are the washers that come factory from Hood Mart. I don't like them, so I always uh, upgrade them and I buy these. Let me show you. I only find them, found them at Ace Hardware Store, like your local Ace Hardware Store, because they are really, really big. So let me show you those real quick. So this is that thread locker that I use, the red one. Make sure that that way these nuts right here hold up really nicely. And these are the washers that I use. And I like to use them because obviously it grabs more surface. And then I use this on the top right there to be able to fit on the half inch bolt right there. So these two are what I use. These are five inches from left to right. That's the width that they are, the diameter. So that's just a little tip that I can give you. You don't have to. You can always use the ones that come factory, but those are a little bit small for me, I think. And um, it like kind of presses the aluminum up here a little bit. So with these, obviously you get a bigger surface and it distributes that weight evenly. So that's kind of the tip I can give you. This is how it looks from the top up here. And this is that curve plate that I'm talking about right here. Let me see. Right here, this is that curve plate and that's where we're gonna put the fifth one right here. That way it holds it up nicely. So you're gonna have one bolt right here. Obviously these two on this side that holds this plate. And then down here, we're just gonna silicone this to be nice and weatherproof. So there is the install for the Hood Mart hood. So here we're gonna take out that factory washer from Hood Mart. You just gotta make sure that these little bolts don't fall all the way down. And then now, we're gonna take the big five inch washer. Obviously it's a bigger diameter than that. That's why we had to get the second washer. 
there's that second washer right there as you can see and then that drops really nice down in there and now we take the factory nuts that they give you half inch factory nuts right there and then we slide those in there it is we just spin them on there and then that's obviously going to grab to the bottom right now it's not a full tight um it's not a full tight what do you call it press because I need someone to hold it from the bottom so I can tighten this up. But that's kind of the gist of it. So you guys can get a good visual of how it's going to look just like that. And obviously right here, we're going to weatherproof all this, make it nice and silicone. We're going to silicone this with 100% silicone and it's going to be weather tight up here. So now it's time that we say farewell to these zip walls. I really do hope that I did a good job up there and this thing doesn't come crashing down. There's one down. Let's go to number two. So far, so good. Number three. Good so far. Last but not least. Oh, success. So thank you, Zip Walls. You have been very useful, as you guys can see. This, uh, these four little tools right here that hold up a lot of things. They held up, they help, they helped us hold up the ceiling, the hood. Um, those are the biggest things that we can come up with. But thank you again, zip walls. So I ended up replacing all four hood mark bolts with new galvanized ones because those got stripped down. Just know that I replaced every single one of them. Oh man, that was a toughie, but finally got it done. This plate right here, this inside one, the duct, I actually had to cut that a few times just because every time I kept putting this plate on there, this thing was overlapping more of the lip and I just wanted it to be nice and flush. So now we're gonna put some of that aluminum high temperature foil tape right on top right here. This is secured with our stainless steel screws, the number 12, three quarter self drilling stainless steel screws and this holds this plate. And then next up is we're gonna install that little mushroom top, the exhaust fan right on top here. And then we're going to silicone all around it and then hook up the box that's right on that side right there, which is an on off switch for the exhaust fan. So that's the next part, but this is complete. Uh, this is that plate on top. This is the duct. And then this is the curb plate. I don't know what this particular name is, but it's just a plate that they give you from Hoodmart duct curb plate. And that's about it. Cut and uh, adhere and glue together. So pretty much we're all done up here at the top. All I'm doing is putting this big glob of silicone and I'm also going to put uh, some flex seal the liquid on here. That works really nice. So I'm just going to like cake it on there. There's the other side right there. There's this side and then that last bolt that was left right there. So all of these got replaced with the Home Depot galvanized half inch. So what's going to happen next is I'm going to put this thread locker right here with an extra nut on top. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna put some thread locker right there and then that's gonna hold up this top nuts on there as safety. So that is the game plan to be able to secure this up and then we're gonna wrap it up and then put that exhaust mushroom top right here and we'll call it a day for today. So there you go, that's how we end the installation for the hood. Haven't wired up the switch yet but that's just a rough start right there. So the key to success on using this Flex Seal liquid, the clear one, is just throw it on there. Like literally that's what I did. Just goop it on there as much as you can. The more, the better. Especially like back here where you have a lot of water that can collect. You want to make sure that you get that all. That red stuff is that um, Loctite. So that's what that is in case you guys are noticing that red around the screw. Obviously we have some back there as well. But that's what I did using the Flex Seal. First, I use silicone to go around it, and then now I'm just putting an extra layer of flex seal. And this has really helped out my food truck. I haven't had a leak in over two years, and it's because I use that right there. So as seen on TV, as they say on there. So let's put this one up right here as we close up the night right on top and make sure that it covers up that hole for tonight. There it is right there. So you guys can get a good aerial view. I climbed actually on my roof. There is that exhaust fan that we're just gonna set right on top right there. 
it's just literally I'm just gonna carry it step on probably the stud right there and then put it right on top there and then tomorrow we'll just secure it with some screws but that's pretty much it oh and then we have to drill a hole right through here somewhere down and catch catch that Romex so it can feed the electrical box that's on the other side of this exhaust hood right here there's one important thing that you do have to know when installing this and let me show you right now when I get it closer to the hole here so there it is set in place uh, one of the little edges right there did grab the flex seal off so I have to redo that really quick this side uh, right here inside the inside the exa exhaust hood there is a hole that is for use for like draining water like when it rains here then obviously you want that facing the curb side which is the side where the edge of the trailer is so make sure that's very important that you put that hole where the hood is because they don't tell you that on the instructions as you can see if you put it the opposite way then you're not going to have anywhere for the water to uh, fall when it rains and it's going to collect in there so make sure that that little drain hole i don't know if that's what they would call it but that's facing the curb side which is obviously where the tires are the edge of the trailer or your truck that's the tip that i can give you when you're installing this but there it is that is installed no not installed 100 percent, but it's set in place for now let's go take a peek at how the flex seal cured up here i let it about 24 hours a little bit over 24 hours and i actually forgot something now i just went to home depot and i forgot to get um these screws right here these are going to work with the three quarter ones that we use on this side to attach that but these might have to be just a little bit longer i had to go get flex half inch liquid tight flex uh, metallic and then right here we need to get a reducer from three quarter to half inch they sell that at home depot as well as well as a flex a metallic flex or liquid tight connector we're gonna need that for this box right here because that's our switch that controls the fan like an on off switch but let's look at this flex seal how it cured yeah, so far so good it looks not bad i'm gonna give it another another coat just because i i would rather give it extra than just leave it on one but it doesn't look bad i could actually leave it like this if i wanted to but i might give it just one more coat all oh, these are nice and coated that one as well is nice but this looks good this looks good it should be uh, rain tight as of right now but like i said i'm just gonna give it one more coat you can do that or not do that it's up to you whatever makes you feel more comfortable but i'm gonna give it one more coat of flex seal and then i'm gonna get these screws sometime today but for now i'm gonna work on this liquid tight that way we can power up this exhaust fan and make sure that it actually works and it's actually gonna take out the smoke from the inside so let's hop on that half inch liquid tight metallic is what we need with the connector and a reducer three quarter to half inch so here is the half inch liquid tight so you guys can see it get a visual they do make two different kinds if you can see the inside there this one is metallic they do make a non-metallic as well i prefer the metallic uh, but it's up to you which one you want to use they do make two sizes as well half inch and three quarter half inch is plenty and this is how the connector looks like this is a half inch liquid tight connector for metallic and then this is the reducing uh, bushing from half inch from three quarter to half inch because the box up top that i'm going to show you right now where the where the switch is for the hood it has a three quarter inch opening so you need a reducer if you're going to use half inch if you're going to use three quarter then obviously it would work but that's kind of the visual that i wanted to show you on there this is how this particular liquid tight connector looks like they do make different kinds this is just the one that they had in stock so i needed a as soon as possible so i bought this one it has the bottom part then what makes it weatherproof liquid tight right here and then this part we're not going to put it in yet because we want to stick our romex in there but this one particularly some of them spin on and this one this one just slides right in right there but some of them just spin right on like a twist and then these are a little bit different so just know that there's different kinds of liquid tight connectors just make sure that you get the right size half inch uh liquid tight non-metallic or metallic whichever one you choose on there but that's how they look like a word of caution if you do want to step on the hood of your trailer make sure that you step on a stud and that would be where you put your bolts in so make sure that you do step on a stud and not on an empty part like it would be right here kind of like you would do in your attic of your house and this is that box that i'm telling you about 
is a switch that controls the exhaust fan. We're gonna take this cover off, and then underneath here, that's where, um, let me see if I can. That is looking at the bottom of the box. That's where that liquid tight connector would go. As you can see, that's a three quarter inch opening. Just wanted to give you the visual on there so you can see it. But that's the switch box or the disconnect that you have up here on the exhaust hood motor. And between this stud right here where this bolt is and this one is where our exhaust Romex is. So I'm gonna drill in through here. You have to drill in through there. You use, just use a, a regular um, drill bit and we're gonna drill. Just make sure that you drill only through the sheet metal right here and a little piece of plywood. I think there should be one right there. Do not drill all the way through to the other side because then you'll go through your stainless steel. But in this case, you would be inside your hood. And then we're gonna grab our Romex. We're gonna take out our can light from the inside and then we're gonna fish our Romex in through there so it can feed up here. So that is kind of the plan. So we're gonna drill right in through here and then let me see if that's where I want it to be. So give me one second. Yeah, that's cool with me, that works. So we're gonna drill in right through here. So you can see there, there's a little bit of piece of plywood right there. Now you get this thing off here. So there is our hole that goes with the liquid tight down to the bottom and that's gonna pick up our Romex. I'm gonna show you a little trick how we fish our wire so we can grab it up here. We just stick a like a guide wire in through there and we throw it out towards the can light. I'm gonna show you how I took off the can light right now. And then we're gonna attach it and then we're gonna pull that Romex through and then that's gonna attach up here and then we should have that power to turn it on. So let's do that real quick. Ah! Let's go see if I can find it inside. There's a can light that we took off, which is always nice to have the can light uh, accessible. And right through here, if we stick our hand there, that little yellow cable should be there. There it is. So with this, we'll attach that Romex. That's a 14.3. We're only gonna use two cables, being the black and being the white, because that's gonna be our switch light. Come on, focus in, baby. There it is. So we're just gonna use that black wire. It's gonna be our switch leg. And then our white wire is gonna be the neutral. And that wire right there, that specific wire, goes to this box right here. And that's what's gonna give it the power once we turn the dial. And this is a home run for the hood. You can see their hood home run. Go straight to the panel. And this one's gonna go straight to that exhaust, which is that wire. So we're just gonna put tape from here to there. And we're gonna pull it from the top and then feed it up to the top through the liquid tight and into that switch box that you saw. So that's the plan of action from there to there, and then we'll put the dial there. So we're back up here on the roof, back and forth, back and forth, and we're gonna pull on that guide wire, and it should come out. It might have a little bit of pressure. If you have someone that can help you from down at the bottom to feed it, that'd be nice. I don't have anybody, so I'm trying to see if I can do it myself uh, without calling any extra help so give me two seconds let me use both arms okay i did it myself i don't have anybody here to help me i just needed to kind of work it in a little bit so there's that wire as you can see it's coming off coming off coming off coming off and you should have enough to be able to make it up here come on baby there you are boom there it is that's the cable that we have and now look at that that's enough to make it into our box and connect it and make it all nice and powered up. So that's how you fish your wire from the bottom in. And then we're just gonna connect it up right now. Let me show you how to do that. So right here, you take out this lid on top. It has a Phillips screwdriver. So you use your Lennox landing one and you take out that waterproof cover. And this is how the inside looks right here. It's just a toggle switch. And it's literally just like a disconnect. We're always gonna have it on the on position once we hook it up because it's gonna be running from the the dial that we're gonna put underneath. So this one's just, this is just literally a safety switch, but we're always gonna keep it on the on position. Just wanted to give you the glimpse of how it looks before we take it out of there. And then we're gonna run this wire through that liquid tight right into here and up top, right there. And on the inside right here, this switch, this toggle switch uh, has two more screws that are gonna come from the wires downstairs, from the ones that we're gonna run through the liquid tight. It's gonna have a neutral 
and then it's gonna have a switch like these are the factory installed cables as you can see there they run inside the exhaust fan those are already factory done so you don't have to worry about those but you just follow the same sequence you put the neutral and that side right there wherever it's at come on focus you put the neutral on that side wherever that same neutral is and then the switch leg goes on this side and that's how you wire this up and that way you're able to have a functioning fan but these are already pre-installed so you don't worry about those right there and all you do right here is you literally you slide if you guys can see i don't even know if you guys will be able to because i need both hands you guys slide this wire right through the liquid tight and it should come out through the other side and then we're going to put that part of the connector right in there and then twist it on but that's how it looks you just feed this wire right in through the liquid tight as such and you should end up with something like this you just put that uh flex right inside and then you connect it with that connector right there and then the romex should just come out through the top through the inside Let's see if you guys can see it right there so that's pretty much how you run that part to the outside and now we're going to connect this the red is just going to get capped off here as a spare the red wire is literally just going to be here as a spare in case somebody wants to put like a little air conditioner unit or something right there a smaller one not the big heavy duty air conditioners but uh, or like a fan that could work as well let me show you the wiring before i cover everything back up here so as i mentioned earlier we have the whites and the black that come factory installed and they come from the back there and this is that cable that I ran from my switch that's going to be downstairs with the dial. So we just do the same thing. We do the black, which is going to be the switch leg, on the same side as the black wire that's factory installed. So black and black on the left side. And then on this side, the two whites are going to get connected together as well. So you have the white cable there and then the white cable that comes from the bottom. And that's basically how we do it. And remember to leave this on the on position unless you're doing some type of maintenance up here then you want to turn it to the off position to make sure that you don't have any power but if your generator is not on and you're not hooked up to the inlet plug then you won't have any power so that's how the wiring is on there just wanted to show you right before i connect it all back up with its cover right there so there it is right there that's the finished product of how it's going to look with the liquid tight right down to the bottom so right here what we're going to do is we're going to use the same flex seal and just cover this up and then we're going to go and do all this one more time just a second coat just to double check that everything gets covered up nicely but we're going to do this one this is our priority and then right here i'm just going to put a bead of silicone right around this just so i can be safe and that's about it everything else is done and we'll connect the dial downstairs turn it on and oh and then secure it right here you need to put some screws on the corners i need to go pick those up real quick and that will do it for the hood install complete 100 percent done uh which is nice because every day is a little bit more progress that we're gonna make on this food trailer last but not least is what they give you here at hood mart it's solid state motor speed control which looks just like this and that's the faceplate and we can consider this just like a regular switch as you would right here it's the same exact thing because once you turn the dial on here like that that's like flicking the switch over there or like a dimmer in your house would be the same thing so in the back you would have a hot that comes from the panel which from here would be your home run which would be your black wire and the other side is your switch leg which in this case it would be the black wire as well the neutrals the white wire from here and the white wire from the panel you just put a wire nut together and you put it inside the box you don't do anything with it you just bury it inside the box the same thing with the red cable that's just an extra so that's how you wire this up on here let me do it real quick and then let me show you the final result of how it looks So here we are wrapping up the wiring for that fan up top. All the wires here, they fit kind of snug. So make sure that you align them and you position them inside the box correctly. If you can find a deeper box, that'd be even better. This one barely fit. 
Uh, but the fan did work. I did put that on the first part video of the hood install just because the video was so long. I split it into two parts, but it did work. And if you want to go back and check that video out, I appreciate that. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the comments. Any questions that you have, please drop them in the comments. That is the best way to reach me because I answer each and every one myself. Again, thanks again for watching. Frank Baltieris.